Hello, everyone. I want to first thank you for all taking time out of your extremely busy days. I know that IT, especially in this environment, is busier than ever, supporting the new remote workforce that many of you are facing. And so today, I'm really hoping we can provide value in talking to you about how to report on that remote worker activity, as well as some key performance indicators that you can keep an eye out on to really understand what that experience looks like. By ways of introductions, my name is Stacy, and I'm with the marketing team here at Goliath. I also have on the phone with me our senior technical consultant, Yemi Lady Ju. And he is going to be talking a lot more in detail about the type of reports and information that could be valuable to you, really documenting that remote worker experience and activity. So before we get started, just a few housekeeping. We expect this webinar to be 45 to 60 minutes. Please submit any questions you have in the Q&A box. We'll answer them either throughout or if we don't get to them at the end of the conversation. I know one question everyone has is, will this recording be available? Yes, within the next 24 hours, you will receive a copy of this recording. And finally, at the end, you will be presented a short survey. Our goal is to bring you relevant content to this community, especially in a time of need. So please take a minute and answer four short survey questions, which will allow us to ensure that we are providing you the best content as we move forward. Now, I did want to take just one slide to introduce to you who Goliath is. Um, Goliath, we've been working with organizations of all sizes and industries for many years, helping them anticipate, troubleshoot, and document the end user experience. Now, in a time like this, we've been helping many of these organizations work with their large distributed and remote workforces. So this is not new to us. In fact, one of our dominant client bases is in healthcare. And by nature, many of these organizations, like Universal Health Services, have over 35 acute hospitals where we're helping them really understand that experience across all different sectors and remote office locations. When our customers hire Goliath, they often tell us it's almost as if they've hired a full-time troubleshooting expert that's available 24 by 7 by 365 days a week because of the amount of information that we can provide to them to help, as well as the amount of automation and intelligence we provide to ensure issues never arise to begin with. And for a lot of these logos, one thing I want to point out is you'll see that we work with organizations of all sizes because we can scale both technically and economically to fit with the largest of organizations as well as small SMBs. So with that out of the way, I really want to jump in and start setting context around our webinar today. We really wanted to provide you information because we know many of you are on the front line of IT, taking a number of calls to get remote workers set up. Do they have enough computers? Do they know how to handle multi-factor authentication? And then you're also getting inundated from management, IT peers, end users, as well as business line managers asking you, do you have information about remote worker activity? Can you tell me if my employees are really working? Can you tell me if they've had issues logging in? Can you tell me if performance is good or bad? In fact, um, just last week, I was talking to a client where we are working on a case study. And what they said is the reason that they love Goliath is they get empirical evidence that allows them to have conversations with their IT counterparts from the network team, the server team, the application team, with other managers, with end users themselves, because they can provide that information and say, look, here is exactly what's happening when it comes to performance, when it comes to end user activity. It's no longer qualitative conversations, but quantitative, which really allows them to drive to the heart of what needs to be answered. Now, one of probably the most frustrating points to all of this is many of you on the phone know getting answers to these questions is not easy. If you're using Citrix, there's not just a click here and get all the information that you need or VMware Horizon. The reason that it is complex is in order to deliver a Citrix or a VMware Horizon environment to support your remote workers, it requires to have almost 15 different vendors all working in concert to deliver that infrastructure. And so when you talk about reporting, and Yemi, if you wanna to go to the next slide, you need to be able to ensure that every one of these pieces are working together 
and you need to be able to report across these elements if you want to have a solid report around activity or performance. So when you think about things working in tandem and delivering a good user experience, you start with the actual end users, right? And you need to look at their behavior and their environment. Where are they logging in from? In today's world, what does their home bandwidth look like? Who is their service provider or what that Wi-Fi connection is? Are they leveraging a hotspot? Are they competing with bandwidth? Are they in some type of public Wi-Fi scenario? So even before you've really logged into Citrix, when you think about the endpoint devices, the firewalls are going through, there's a lot of elements that impact performance and experience that you need to be, have visibility in to report on. From there then, you might actually have your true Citrix environment and maybe or your VMware Horizon environment. If you're in healthcare, you have your EHR applications. If you're in finance, you might be talking about access to Bloomberg or other critical applications being delivered. You've got your backend systems from the licensing server, profile servers, Active Directory. Below that is your host system. So in order to deliver a report of brown performance, you need to be able to look at all of these areas and understand impact to deliver a true understanding of, are my end users having a good remote experience? And when you talk about activity or application usage, you need to be able to drill into specific areas and understand. The other thing is you need this information if there is an error. So when someone calls in and says, I have a log on error, you need to be able to identify, is that an error that potentially is impacting all users? Or is it something custom to that individual user? It might be their home office environment, or it could be a setting within their own active directory. All of you are probably experiencing this right now, and it's no harm to our end users, but it causes one squeaky wheel or one exec to have a bad experience and now the word down to you is everything's broken. And so you need a solution that's gonna give you an overall picture of how these different vendors and systems are working together. And this is just another depiction of it. And I can happily provide you some of these slides after if you're interested, if you're trying to have these conversations around why it's so hard, because you literally need to report on each of these elements. You need to understand the devices people are using, their home office environment, What's going on in the delivery infrastructure? And if you have enough server capacity in your host system, you need to understand the Citrix and VMware layer. And if you're in healthcare, absolutely on the front line of this pandemic, you need to know how all of this is potentially impacting your access to your EHR application. And so you need a tool that is gonna provide you visibility across all of these areas. And that tool, when you're talking about the ability to monitor, troubleshoot, and document that remote user experience, when you think about reporting and tracking, it needs to be able to handle three things at the highest level. The first is historical reports and analytics. You need to be able to go and do a look at what was performance three weeks ago, what is performance today? You need to be able to have those metrics so you can drive data conversations across your organization, as well as with outside vendors, with end users. You also need that information so that when you do put a fix in place, you can prove that it has been fixed. How many of on the phone today have been asked, wait a minute, last week there was a performance issue. I told you you could increase you know, capacity in the cloud. Why are there still issues? Well, you can prove that no, you fixed that performance issue, but maybe there's another, or maybe there is no other issue. It's still end users using legacy information to report on their experience. And then one of the top things, and Yemi's gonna show this in a minute, we absolutely are getting asked, while we wanna trust our employees, we wanna back up. If we're not seeing people be productive, we wanna understand, are they really active in the system? Are they just logging in and then going off and walking their dog for the day? Are they truly doing the job that they're expected to do? Because we're here trying to support them, allowing them to keep you know, working and making sure that they have everything they need. And in doing that, we wanna make sure that they are productive. The next set that you need to look at is really do you have real time? So you need the historical, but you also need that real time evidence. So when someone calls in and says, my system is slow, you can quickly identify, is it slow? Is it a single end user issue? Or again, is it broadly impacting multiple users? And you need to have deep metrics. You cannot have just light metrics that says it's slow. You need deep metrics that can pinpoint where in all of those vendors I highlighted and all of those different IT elements. And you need to, be able to do that quickly. And finally, 
you need to be able to have documented evidence that you are doing your best to prevent any issue from occurring. So one of the biggest frustrations, I think, for many of you on the phone, beyond what I just said, is many management or end users are coming to you and saying, why can't you predict that there's slow performance? Why do you have to wait for me to even file a ticket? And in these times, as everyone's remote, it's even harder. They're using personal computers. Um, I talked to a customer the other day, and they're like, yes, I'm busy supporting our new corporate network, i.e. the internet right? Everything is so unique and different in these home offices, it makes it really hard to predict if performance is good or bad. But having a system that has built-in intelligence and automation that can proactively alert you that issues may arise can save you a lot of time and energy and, and user tickets. And then finally, and I've hit on this a few times, if you're in healthcare, you absolutely need a tool that provides purpose-built modules for those major EHR systems that you're using. A tool that does not have a focus in healthcare is not gonna give you the visibility and the reports you need to satisfy the questions that your managers, your end users, your other IT counterparts are asking you. So with that, let's dive in. I'm gonna do one last slide and then turn it over to the technical expert because I know you're tired of hearing from marketing. And so with that, I'm gonna let Yemi really drive into um, criteria number one for a good purpose-built tool, which is all around the historical report. And providing that evidence so that you can show how active are your users in this session, um, how much uh, application usage is going on, license usage, what is peak usage so you can think about capacity, what is the actual performance, and if you fix something, has it truly impacted performance over time? And being able to slice and dice that data looking at individual users, groups of users that might report to a single business line, groups of users, if it's a global organization, you wanna understand, are my employees working from home here in the US having the same experience as those in India, as those in other locations? So you need a tool that provides you this holistic view, but then allows you to slice and dice at different granularities so that you can support a lot of the questions that are being asked to you. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to you, Yemi, and why don't you talk through some of the key data that teams really are starting to look at to better understand that remote worker experience. Thanks so much, Stacey. I think that that really does set the stage here, uh, uh, you know, talking about some of the key data points and key reports that a lot of our customers uh, uh, leverage, you know, on a daily basis, especially within this period where you have a lot more remote users and you need, and they need to be able to prove to management, um, not only that the environment is performing or is not performing as well uh, to support these users, but also that users are leveraging these tools um, that are being published out to them. So, you know, we can sort of separate these two things into performance reports uh, as well as sort of activity reports. So when we're talking about performance reports, you need sort of data that allows you to point to, you know, what is, the user experience, not from a not only from a resource utilization and host performance and VM per performance, but what does that actually mean from a user experience point of view? Um, you know, what is my average round trip time? What is my average log on duration at, at, at any stage for any different application or for groups of users, delivery groups, locations? Um, this is sort of objective information that can then be used to drive uh, um, you know, uh, either new purchases or drive new technologies being implemented that can actually impact the users positively. So that's sort of the performance side. And you know, we have a number of different reports and we'll go through some of them um, that really break open these sections and allow you to get the information that is needed to actually improve the environment and justify fix actions and then prove that those fixes actually uh, have positively impacted the users. Then the other section then would be worker activity. As we have an influx in remote users all across you know, multiple different organizations, uh, the number one thing that has come up has been, we need to be able to point to a specific users or a specific user or groups of users and say, okay, why haven't you been able, why haven't you been working uh, or be able to show are users actually leveraging these sort of resources that are expensive that we're publishing out to them? So 
Um, you know, we have your usage reports, whether it's from a Citrix or VMware Horizon point of view. Uh, you have the end user activity report, and we'll go into great detail with this report because this allows you to tell whether or not a user has been creating traffic within their session, i.e. doing work from home or not. You have peak usage, application usage reports, in which we'll talk on uh, um, you know, in a second as well. So with that, I can flip over here to some of these reports um, uh, that, are, that are really, really critical as, you know, from what our customers have told us uh, in being able to point to or tell business line managers, show business line managers um, you know, who's actually working uh, and who's actually leveraging these tools. So here's an end user uh, activity report and you can see, you know, we're pointing out a particular user here, Greg Jackson, who uh, has not been working from home. And so sort sort of giving you the ability to show, okay, the active hours within the session. And, and just for clarification, uh, the active hours is actually a uh, um, is we calculate the uh, the amount of time within the session that's actually that the user is creating ICA traffic. So creating uh, uh, or, or doing stuff and, and, and causing some of these metrics to be collected. Um, so that's how we're able to accurately tell how long a user's been using their session. That's really the information that need, that's needed to show whether or not someone's actually working because what we do here is that users actually, you know, log into their environment and then go for a walk or go do something else. And then if you're just looking at it from a session start or end date and end date, um, then, you know, that really doesn't give you the information needed there. So there's from a sort of macro perspective, um, this is typically run by department or uh, by delivery group and then sent over to the, to, or by application and then sent over to the business line managers. Uh, here's one that focuses on an individual user. And this one actually breaks open the user, breaks the, you know, the same information as far as active hours, average session length, um, but it also breaks down their log on times as well for that time period. So really giving you that ability to sort of take a look at not just the activity, but but also performance uh, for an individual user. And you and as you can tell by the dates, you know these reports have been leveraged by our customers uh, uh, well, well before this pandemic. Um, you know we, we actually had a customer in uh, sort of the financial space. They were moving to a remote workspace. Uh, uh, initiative, and they wanted to tell, you know, whether or not users, whether whether or not these uh, users were actually using the environment. Um, um, you know, people were complaining about slowness, but then aren't using the environment. So they wanted to point out point that out to not only the managers but the IT, so they can understand uh, exactly what usage um, and uh, overall performance was. So this is one that you know we've done that we these you know end user activity reports have definitely been used and been leveraged for years by our customers. And it's been even more uh, uh, useful within this, this particular uh, uh, climate that we're in. Um, some of the other ones here, so this one would be a log on duration report. So this one's more specifically about user experience and performance. And here we break open a specific delivery group and we show the average log on time. So uh, this is used to sort of baseline the environment to make sure, okay, well, now we know what alert thresholds to set on. So if a user has a logon that's above this sort of 6.5 uh, 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 second logon time, then we can get an alert quickly, um, reach out to that user and say, okay, something's going on, we're working on that. So giving a baseline of overall performance, especially when we're talking about remote users and being able to support remote users, that's something that a lot of our customers find very helpful. Um, and as you can tell, some of these reports you know, or out of the box, and others customers are leveraging other tools that we provide uh, to create custom reports, uh, uh, leveraging the deep metrics, and we'll talk about that, uh, to create these reports that uh, really fit the business needs um, uh, as they come up. Here's another one that I think is really important. A lot of our customers find value in this, which is the most used applications. Now, you, you know, uh, in, in a lot of Citrix environments, we've seen customers having hundreds of applications being published out to users. Um, and this report then shows management, okay, what users are actually, what applications are actually being used within a specific time period. So as you're doing upgrades or as you're, uh, you know, spinning up new portions of the environment, you can tell whether or not these applications need to be 
decommissioned if no one's using it. Um, or you can reach out to those specific users and ask them if they could use a different application. Um, so this sort of information uh, has also been very helpful, not only from a performance perspective, but for also an activity perspective, uh, uh, just giving that additional insight to make some decisions uh, in IT that can actually help the environment. And then here we have license usage reports, um, especially during this time where a lot of a lot more users are being added on to Citrix, added on to the uh, virtualization environment. These reports are being used just to understand where we are from a licensing perspective. Um, can we support the peak hours as far as with licensing or do we need to purchase new ones and things like that? Some customers like to be really close to the limit on license usage. Other people like to have buffers. Uh, so these are all sort of uh, you, you, this allows you to, to not only separate based on delivery groups and other things like that, but just to track things over time and track things, uh, whether it's from a temporary license perspective or just getting new licenses. And then here we have log on duration. Uh, this, this one's just, you know, being able to break open the individual sections of the log on process, understand if there are any specific portions that are adding times, so maybe it's group policies, whether it's profile loads or any scripts. Um, this is very sort of IT focused because it's sort of numbers intensive. And then here you have one that's very graphically intensive to show management, okay, over time, what sections or what portions of the logon process has actually uh, been detrimental or been uh, adding times to the environment. You can see session count per day, per hour as well, giving you sort of details into that logon performance uh, in the environment. So with that, I'll, I'll pass it over to Stacy to, to set the stage a little bit before we dive into the technology. Thanks, Yemi. And one thing I want to point out in some of the reports Yemi showed, you might have seen a few of those look different in just terms of display. Um, that was by design, right? So a lot of the data, especially when you're looking at a third party tool, you want to have the out of the box reports that you natively can deliver but you also want to have easy access to information that you can export, let's say in a CSV or Excel sheet, and potentially import that into your reporting um, tool of choice. So for example, the application usage Yemi showed, that was actually a sample from a customer we have where they exported the data to put in their own reporting metrics because they wanted the look and feel and in their native system. And so as you think about what you need from a reporting perspective, it's not only can you get to the data and the granularity, but how are you going to leverage that, whether it be out of the box and the look and feel, or do you want to be able to combine that information with others and leverage it in your own reporting tools and have it in a format that is necessary. So now moving on to criteria number two, it's really all about the real time data. So the historical view is critical, especially when you want to prove that performance has been addressed, or you want to see historically trends around how people are active in their sessions and what is the average session level of activity. But you also want to be able to understand in real time what is going on from performance. So Yemi's going to talk you through kind of a case study where we were working with an organization, Penn National Insurance, and they kicked off their remote worker initiative last year. Um, so they were looking for expanding their remote workforce. And what happened is their virtual workspace project almost came to a grinding halt because management was hearing subjective feedback that performance was slow. And IT was saying, look, we've checked the entire, they happen to be using Citrix, we've checked our entire Citrix infrastructure delivery layer, we've looked at our host system, we see absolutely no reason that performance should be slow. And so what they needed was real-time data that could pinpoint, one, how many people were impacted by slowness. Was it one or two loud users, or was it truly a large issue across all workers? And secondly, if there was an issue, was it because of the home office environment? Everyone's home office environment is unique. You have different bandwidth, different service providers, different endpoints that you're working with. Um, you might have other people competing for bandwidth on that uh, internet provider network that you're leveraging. And so if you don't have visibility or tools that can give you deep metrics into that, it's really hard to have collaborative conversations. And so what Penn National was doing is they had to rule out everything every time an end user complained and then start asking the end user questions about their own behavior and environment. And so they wanted a tool that would allow them 
to have better conversations with their end users, as well as prove to management is it really an issue or there are a few spotty issues that happen to bubble its way up to the top. So with that, Yemi, why don't you talk about the kind of real-time data that's necessary to really isolate root cause and drive a lot of those conversations I just spoke about. And frankly, this is what saved Penn National Insurance's overall initiative and allowed them to move past the complaints that were rising to the top around management. Yeah, Stacey, I think that's a really good point. Um, you know, when we're talking about Penn National, um, they typically were looking at this screen here. This is the Citrix virtual apps and desktop session display, um, because this is where they're able to get that real time uh, and historical data on performance. And we'll talk about some of the metrics that are here, but here's how they actually leveraged it. So uh, during a workday, they would actually uh, just filter based on the users that have sort of the top latencies and to figure out, okay, are we actually having sort of a widespread issue with latency uh, or issues within session performance, or is it a couple users that are one off or something like that are at, that are actually experiencing issues? Um, what they found out, what they found out was, first of all, the top users were always going to have latency because they were on satellite networks. So um, when those users complained about slowness, there was a quick answer. Well, looks like you know you're on a satellite network, and uh, um, which isn't supported in our remote workspace uh, initiative. So you're always going to have latency. Um, you would need to upgrade your your uh, your connectivity or your ISP to be able to support that. Um, and then from there, they can identify all of the remaining users. Okay, these users are having slowness. Where are they connecting in from? Or you can drill into their session to sort of take a closer look. And let's actually do that here with one of these users. So here, when you click on a particular user, you now have details into everything that impacted their session in about seven or eight tabs. And you can see it, them here at the top of the screen. These are sort of the details that break open sort of uh, the user's connection, the user's performance of the of the machines that they're on, uh, what their behavior is, and these are sort of the details that are really needed to have those data-driven conversations. Um, so starting off in the summary tab, you can see sort of all of the components that was involved in their sessions. You can see sort of logon duration details uh, and everything that went into their logon process. And you can even see uh, key performance metrics for a particular user session. Um, and when we talk about deep metrics, we're not just talking about round trip time, which shows you at a high level that the user is actually having a problem. Sort of like in this particular session here, where you can see towards the end of the session, there's actually a problem here. This user is definitely experiencing some issues inside of their session. Our technology then breaks open network latency, which shows you real time network latency, not the typical ICMP or ping based network latency. This actually shows you um, uh, uh, you know, from the ICA protocol itself, whether or not network bandwidth in real time is actually causing the problem in this session. So you can see here in this particular session, this user was having issues because it was a specific network related issue and not something on the resource side or the host side or something like that. And then here in connection speed, what this customer would be able to identify is it looks like there is a drop, a major drop in connection speed. And keep in mind, this is the amount of bandwidth available for Citrix receiver at the user's endpoint. So we're going to talk about remote users, wherever this user is connected in from, you can actually tell how much connection speed they have to actually allocate it for this session to actually do or use this session. This is the information that you can use to then take to your manager or take to this user and say, hey, you were having issues starting at about 1143, and that is because at about 1142, your connection speed dropped. And that's actually what was driving those problems. This is sort of that data-driven information that you can then use historically to not only prove that the environment is working correctly because everyone, every user that had a problem, it was because of connection speed, but that you know actually have collaborative conversations with whether it's a network team or the end users themselves uh, to really uh, add that credibility to an IT perspective. So, sort of that's just what we see here on the um, law on the sort of summary page. But we can drill into some of the rest of the tabs where you can see details into each stage of the logon process and you know, expand different sections so you can see exactly what's impacting 
uh, the logon times. We can break open user behavior in the ICHDX channel tab, where here in this bottom section, you can see all of the types of bandwidth that are being used inside of this user session. So what you can see here is printer input and output bandwidth, clipboard input and output bandwidth, uh, uh, thin wire bandwidth, which is the Citrix display adapter, audio input and output bandwidth. So maybe they're using a soft phone within their session or, or things like that. And here you can show all of the different channels, input and output that we actually have visibility into. So all of these metrics then drive some of the reporting that we have uh, because this allows you not only to come up with conclusions and troubleshoot, uh, but to really prove uh, uh, um, and get real time and get an understanding of uh, the uh, performance of the environment, uh, not only in real time, but historically as well. Um, and keep in mind, there are a lot of deep metrics here, of course, um, and uh, you know metrics that typically aren't very available. So within our technology, within our product, we actually have sort of embedded documentation uh, that we really identifies what tab you're on and gives you uh, documentation on not only the metrics and um, what those metrics mean, but how to use them to troubleshoot issues as they come up in your environment. So uh, as you sort of leverage this tool to uh, identify some of these issues, you have documentation uh, uh, in the form right there inside of the technology that help you troubleshoot issues uh, um, and solve them uh, really quickly or and, and document them and really explain to your managers what exactly is impacting performance. Um, now, we went through a little bit of an example uh, you know, of you know, real time, how to identify things, uh, root cause of issues inside of an environment. Um, but we actually have screenshots here uh, talking about how one of our customers was able to use this tool uh, uh, in the same fashion. So going through that same process, they had users kind of calling in, a particular number of users calling in, complaining about issues. Uh, they then went through the same sort of uh, process that I just went through where they sorted by latency, they found the users, they clicked on the sessions, they identified those uh, metrics and drilling further into the session, they saw similar to that example I just gave, a spike in network latency um, but that correlated directly to a drop in connection speed, right? Uh, so this was sort of the objective information what they used to get on the phone with this particular user and say, well, you were having an issue at about 3 p.m. Um, and that was because there was a connection speed drop. What happened at 3 p.m.? The user says, well, you know, we had uh, my kids come back from school at the time. Uh, the spouse gets on the computer as well. So everyone's on the network. Um, and that actually sort of caused the bandwidth to drop. And then as the uh, user then you know, told everyone to get off the network, they were able to see in real time, the connection speed went back up and latency sort of normalized again. So um, they were able to prove to this user that it's not an overall performance issue in the environment. It's not a Citrix problem. It's actually something at your end that was actually causing an issue. Another issue that they were able to solve was a particular user had a really, really long log on time. And this wasn't something that affected multiple users. It was just for an individual user. And because this was a high profile user reported this to management, um, they needed to prove to management that this was not a widespread thing. This was something, a one-off, that actually impacted uh, this just this particular user. So drilling into his session, they were able to sort of identify it was a specific thing with process, uh, with profile load. And on further investigation, they just saw that someone decommissioned a drive uh, that was actually being mapped, that his session was actually being mapped to. Um, so, you know, it actually added about 180 seconds to the logon process. It was a quick fix. They removed that policy and they were able to cut his logon time down drastically. Um, but this was sort of the objective information that they had historically to show not only to that user, but to management that, no, this is not a widespread issue. This is an issue, a one-off issue that happened to this particular user. Um, and uh, we were able to get that fixed and remediated very, very quickly. So with that, I'll pass it over to Stacy to talk about the early warning system. Great, thank you, Yemi. So the third criteria is really, how do you help um, answer the, the question around, can we prevent performance issues from even happening? Can we identify where there's potential bottlenecks before our users come in? Because again, we don't wanna to have to wait for their ticket. 
In fact, in many organizations, people have become very reluctant to even file a ticket, wondering if it's going to happen. They've become very complacent. And so understanding before users even log in to start their day is critical. And so here at Goliath, one of the things that we created working with a customer with Universal Health Services was this early warning system. They had 35 acute hospitals, and I mentioned this earlier, across the United States. And they actually had IT employees rotating that would go in at five in the morning for these different hospitals, log in, test from different floors to ensure that in their case, EHR performance was optimal. And so they said, can you automate this? Because we're not even catching everything. And in fact, they were a hospital, which meant that people were working 24 by seven. So even coming in at five in the morning was really not preventing issues. And that was the essence of where we built this intelligent and automated early warning system that would not only test performance, but document and report on those key performance indicators and alert if there was an issue. So with that, Yemi, why don't you show the early warning system and how it gets the as well as the documentation proving if there is an issue or not an issue. Absolutely, Stacey. So um, right now what I'm showing on the screen is, is sort of the deployment architecture of this early warning system. Um, and it's really, really simple. There is just a, a lightweight piece of software that is deployed to the different locations where users are located. You know, that can be deployed in the cloud to represent, you know, remote users, um, you know, for in the case of the uh, uh, with the large health system, uh, the technology was deployed at each of the different hospital locations uh, where there were actually, uh, where users were actually logging into the environment. Um, so to give you some sort of perspective, because what's happening here is, you know, at each one of these locations, this technology is logging on and launching applications on a 24 by 7 basis, making sure that there is a successful presentation. And if there's an issue, IT now gets a real-time alert. So to give you some perspective as to what's actually taking place at each one of these locations, I have a quick video here showing what we call the application availability monitor actually launching a Citrix session. So from that location, it's going to open up a web browser to the Netscaler or storefront page. It's able to accept any security statements. It's then able to uh, log in the same way an end user would, then confirm that the storefront page loads, navigate the storefront page if needed, and then start launching these applications and desktops on a scheduled basis. So uh, it's gonna click on one application, launch it and make sure that there is a successful presentation closes it out and starts again. Um, this is sort of scheduled 24 by seven. Obviously you don't have to sit there and watch it, but if there's an issue with any step of the process that actually uh, results in a failure or uh, an unsuccessful presentation of whatever application is being published, then IT gets a real time alert and then detailed analysis here on this page, which is the application availability analysis tab. So we're talking about documentation. The top, you can actually filter here based on the date range that you want and all of these sort of metrics adjust. So you can see sort of the, the blue bars represent here the launch times for each one of the launches. And then you can also here see the trend line representing the overall availability at that moment in time. And you can filter this based on date on the uh, uh, locations that you're launching these applications from the applications and desktops that are being launched as well. So you can quickly sort of pull back the information you need um, uh, and sort of send out a quick report over to management and show, okay, this is what availability looks like from a synthetic or virtual user logon perspective. Now the bottom section, this is where you'd go when an issue arises, right? You wanna see exactly what caused this failure. So now you can see the date and time of the launch. You can see what application or desktop was being launched, where it was being launched from, and ultimately whether or not the launch failed or was successful. What you can actually do is show um, uh, you know, exactly at what stage it failed as well. Um, so if I click here on this particular launch, I can now get details into each stage of the process as well as uh, uh, screenshots. So I have the ability to point to a specific issue or the specific uh, error message that would potentially present to the end users so I can get ahead of those issues and fix it. And then afterwards, show management uh, the number of failures that happened uh, that we were alerted to 
and a core show a correlation that okay none of these issues actually impacted users or none of these issues uh actually uh, uh, was present to the users because we got ahead of those uh, uh, and fixed them. So with that, I think I'm gonna pass it back to Stacy so we can uh, move to Q&A. Perfect, thanks Yemi. And as Yemi showed you, it's not just about the early warning system, but it's having that evidence, that screenshot evidence, which is gonna allow you to have better conversations, right? So much about documentation, is not only to provide information, but foster conversations with your IT counterparts, with management, with other IT vendors, as well as end users themselves. Now, I know many of you might be wondering, I need a tool like this, but right now I can barely breathe with the onslaught of activity I have. How long and how hard would it be to take and put something like this into my environment? Goliath really wants to help the IT pros that are suffering a lot of these challenges right now, especially as you grow around the remote working environment. And so we've created a turnkey implementation service where we can get you up and running in less than two hours. This includes a white glove implementation where we'll get on the call with you and talk you through the entire deployment within your environment. We'll set you up with our technical consulting team and ensure that you have some of those top reports you need. Maybe it's around end user activity. Maybe it's around application usage. Maybe it's around log on performance. Let's identify what are the top reports you need and get those up and running quickly. Well, then you can leverage additional reports over time. And then the other thing that we've hit on and Yemi showcased in a lot of his demonstrations is we come with embedded intelligence and automation. We will proactively alert you on over 250 potential IT failure points within your environment. It's as if you've hired a full-time troubleshooting expert that is always available and requires no training. And as Yemi showcased in the demo as well, we've got embedded help. We recognize that more people are now looking, especially at your Citrix or VMware High Horizon infrastructure. They may not understand what ICA latency means or how you correlate network latency, ICA latency, and connection speed to truly understand and fix a problem. We have all of that documentation in line of our product, not only telling you what those metrics mean, but how to use those metrics to better document and identify root cause. All of this can allow you to get up and running and have an impact today overcoming some of those challenges you're facing. So with that, I wanna turn it over. We've had a few questions come in. If there's additional questions, please put them in the Q&A box. And we're really happy that we were able to have everyone join us today on the webinar. So Yemi, I think this first question is for you. Um, with our increased remote workers, we are seeing our infrastructure be strained. Can you show a broader level to identify if a server or a host is maxing out of CPU power or memory? Sure, yeah, absolutely. I think. You know, um, you know, when we're talking about overall infrastructure and overall um, uh, monitoring in the environment, to your point, you know, a tool needs to have embedded intelligence and automation. So um, we can actually show you in a view here, as in, in, excuse me, while I pull this up, uh, uh, how our customers sort of identify things like, you know, resources or individual components that actually are negatively impacting performance. So uh, here is, you know, the automatic discovery and dependency map that we have for Citrix. And as the name implies, you know, this will automatically sort of map out, discover all of those environments, all of those components in the environment that contribute to Citrix, map them out, and then add over 300 monitoring rules to the environment. So we're gonna be monitoring for conditions, failure points, thresholds, and events that actually can cause end user experience issues if they're not taken care of. Um, so you have the ability to sort of salt, set up multiple environments here at the top of the screen um, uh, and click on individual components and make sure that, you know, and see resource utilization, health checks, or any alerts that are triggering based on the intelligence. But to answer the specific question, if we drill here into the delivery layer, we can see a sort of logical breakdown of the environment. We see delivery groups, you know, machine catalogs, gold images, and clicking down on a delivery group you can now see end user experience metrics here on the on the right hand side of the screen. Uh, you know, end user experience metrics per 
delivery group. And you could follow that down the line. So now per uh, machine catalog, per hypervisor cluster, and if you had multiple hosts, this environment doesn't, but then you can see end user experience metrics per individual ESX host. So let's say for instance, there's a storage latency issue uh, on, on a specific host that's actually driving poor user experience. You know, ICA latency is high and round trip time is high for all of the users that are on that host. You would not only be able to identify that just by following the red because this view is sort of built with some knock capability. So as components start to fail, those components turn, turn, start to turn red or orange, depending on the severity. So you can see that and quickly drill into those and find uh, those individual uh, components and how they are impacting the users. So this is not only used as a knock view, but as a macro troubleshooting stop to be able to identify things, as just mentioned, where components are actually driving poor user experience. Hopefully that answered the question. Great, thanks Yemi. Also had a hand wave from a customer that joined us today. And we did have quite a few customers um, join. If any of you are out there and you're looking to leverage some of the out of the box reports that you have yet to implement, please reach out to your client success representative and we will get you set up um, as soon as possible. So either reach out direct or feel free to use the tech info email address here at the bottom of the slide. Uh, Yemi, another question for you. If an employee is logged in from home on their own PC, can your application detect their activity on their own PC if it's not in a Citrix environment? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so, uh, you know, obviously when we're talking about, you know, users accessing the environment, uh, let's take for instance from a laptop, right? Uh, they could be doing stuff outside of you know, uh, outside of Citrix, so outside of, you know, uh, um, maybe watching a video or streaming a movie or something like that outside of Citrix while they're waiting for it to log in or something like that. So in that case, Citrix receiver doesn't have uh, uh, enough or does would not have as much bandwidth available for it uh, to actually have a Citrix session. That's when that connection speed metric comes into play because we can see Every sync, we can see the amount of bandwidth that is available for Citrix receiver, you know, at that user's endpoint, we can actually point to, um, we can point to, you know, something going on on that particular machine or at that location is actually being the root cause of the slowness. Now, on further investigation, there's going to be some further investigation. However, you can rule out the Citrix environment as being the root cause of that latency uh, because of that connection speed metric. Great, thank you, Yemi. Um, another question is how are you different from other tools on the market today? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a good point, that's a good question. Um, I think it really comes down to uh, uh, the historical um, uh, detail as well as the deep metrics that we collect. Um, so we don't average or roll up any tech, any information we collect inside of the technology. Uh, and we also, um, our customers have told us or customers that have chosen our, our technology have told us that um, uh, compared to any other tools in the marketplace, we have the deepest metrics. There's metrics into the ICA protocol, the metrics into the connection speed and um, and uh, the, the network latency and details and aligning those details to user experience so that you can uh, quickly identify those things that are causing problems. That's, those are sort of the things that customers point out as being sort of the root cause uh, or, 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 or the differences between uh, our technology and other tools out there. Um, and another thing, and I think that's apparent here on the slide, is our um, healthcare uh, uh, focus in healthcare. Um, we're the only uh, troubleshooting uh, uh, vendor that has integrations into the four major EHR, e EMR applications, um, you know, that are in the marketplace. So uh, technical and uh, uh, business relationships with Cerner and uh, where they actually resell our product or, you know, uh, as, as being a part of the uh, Epic App Orchard program where, you know, we actually integrate with Epic System Pulse. We have 
purpose-built modules for Meditech and Allscripts as well. Uh, when it comes to healthcare and troubleshooting the delivery infrastructure as well as the application, um, I think that uh, those are sort of the different the differences that we bring uh, uh, to the marketplace. Hopefully that answered that question. Thank you. I mean, I think to just reiterate, especially for anyone in healthcare, all too often the feedback that a, a clinician or physician say is my EHR system is slow, right? I can't log in or maybe there's a nursing application that is extremely slow. Maybe a peripheral device is dropping. You can't log in with a home, uh, the handheld scanner. And obviously in the time of need and strain that our healthcare workers are under, there is no tolerance for slowness. Now, as IT, we recognize that that slowness might have nothing to do with the EHR application. So having the evidence to identify, is it the EHR app? Is it the Citrix infrastructure? Is it end user behavior? Being able to pinpoint that root cause can save significant time and resolve issues so that you do not have those issues coming for your frontline healthcare workers. And actually, Yemi, we have a question, and I'm guessing this is coming just because I've seen this before from healthcare, and it is, does your system work in a double hop scenario? They use a hosted medical record system and um, they're looking because they have VMware Horizon on premise. Could we handle a setup like that? Yeah, absolutely. That is um, exactly how a number of our healthcare customers are leveraging the technology because we had the same amount of details we saw in the demonstration today for VMware Horizon and you know when we're talking about a hosted application, let's say for instance Cerner, you know our technology can be deployed in Cerner RHO, so you can get that end-to-end -end visibility into user experience not only in the on-premises VDI or desktop environment, but also that user experience from that environment to uh, Cerner RHO or to the hosted application. I know it might seem counterintuitive, but the real way to get that user experience when we're talking about a hosted application um, is by putting technology in that hosted application data center to really get that end-to-end -end visibility and point to exactly what the root cause is and then leverage those deep metrics and documentation for them. Great. Um, another question is how long do you keep data for? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, me, are uh, you there? Maybe unmute. <laughs> no problem. Um, so that's a good question, and you know, and, and my, we talked about that as far as with the differentiating factors. We actually um, we give our customers the um, ability to choose how long they want to keep the information for. So um, whether it's thirty days, sixty days, ninety days, you have the ability to choose, and you also have the ability to choose what type of data you choose, you you keep. Uh, so maybe you don't want the event log data for very long, but you want user experience metrics for about a year, which a lot of our uh, healthcare customers do. Um, you know, we have the ability to sort of segment that out as well. Since we don't average or roll up any of the information, uh, that information can be kept um, however long you would like to keep the information for. Perfect. Um, all right. We've got a couple more questions coming in. Will we be able to get a copy of this webinar? Yes, it will be in your inbox in the next 24 hours. Um, and yep, the whole link to the recording. So we will provide that to you. And one additional question, but if anyone has any other ones, please send them in. The last one I have for right now is, do you integrate with systems like Splunk or Splunk now? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It's kind of hard to be in the uh, enterprise uh, um, monitoring um, uh, space without integrating into some of those tools. So yeah, we, we integrate with those tools, um, either it's Splunk, ServiceNow, um, and you know, any other one of those, um, you know, management and, uh, uh, enterprise sort of reporting tools. We, uh, we integrate with those, um, in a number of different ways. Great. And let me, Double check. All right. That is the last question that we have. So Yemi, thank you again for your time. Thank you everyone that stayed on the phone with us. Again, if you are interested in trialing this software, 
please email us at techinfo at goliathtechnologies.com. And as you close out, you will be given a short survey. It will take you less than 60 seconds to complete, and we really appreciate your feedback. Um, I wish everyone to stay safe and healthy, and thank you again for joining us.